It is August 6th, 2019. I am Shannon Wong. I am a medical doctor, specifically an ophthalmologist or an eye surgeon specializing in cataract surgery. Today we're going to talk about some recent news in the world of cataract surgery. I'm going to share my opinions and perspectives as an ophthalmologist who has been performing cataract surgery for the past 24 years. On my YouTube channel, I've had since 2010, I've posted videos about eye surgery to educate the public about various eye surgeries that we perform in our private practice. Today I'm going to offer my perspective on some news that affects cataract surgeons, the staff that works with cataract surgeons, fellow humans that will undergo cataract surgery in the future, physicians in all specialties of medicine, their staffs and their future patients, basically all U.S. citizens. On Monday, July 29th, about a week ago, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Service released its proposed, we'll put that in quotes, proposed fee schedule for the year 2020. So what is CMS, or the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Service? CMS is a federal agency within the United States Department of Health and Human Services, HHS, that administers the Medicare program and works in partnership with state governments to administer Medicaid and the Children's Health Insurance Program, or CHIP, and Health Insurance Portability Standards. In other words, CMS is Medicare, Medicaid, and CHIP. CMS is the federal government's arm of paying for health care through Medicare and Medicaid services. Why is CMS policy important? CMS pays all doctors who treat patients with Medicare, Medicaid, or CHIP insurance. If CMS decides to change how they pay doctors for delivery of health care, whether CMS decides to increase or decrease the payment, it can significantly alter the healthcare landscape because if doctor's payments become lowered to a point that doctors become reluctant to offer health care to patients because the compensation falls below a certain critical level, then doctors will choose to limit access or li limit delivery of health care to their patients. Does CMS policy affect private insurance? Yes, because most private insurers, for example, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Scott & White, United Healthcare, you name it, private insurance, they usually compensate doctors for their work in a ratio directly related to Medicare and CMS payment schedules. So what happened on July 29th? What was the policy? I'm going to read a memo from the American Academy of Ophthalmology, which is the largest organization of ophthalmologists in the country. The memo reads, this is from July 29th, 2019. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services today released its proposed fee physician fee schedule for 2020. Here are the highlights. Based on the Academy's early analysis, because this is a proposed rule, the Academy will work with CMS over the next few months to ensure a final version that is fair to ophthalmologists. They title this article, The Academy and the American Society of Cataract and Refractive Surgery Secure Equitable Cataract Reimbursements. Then they go on to state that the Academy partnered with the American Society of Cataract and Refractive Surgery in an exhaustive effort to retain reasonable cataract reimbursement for our profession. CMS today agreed to the rate that the American Medical Association's Relative Value Scale Update Committee, or RUC, submitted. Although this is a decrease, the rate is equitable relative to payments of other physician services of similar time and intensity. It is a recommendation to which the Academy and ASCRS agreed. CMS accepted this recommendation for its proposed fee schedule for 2020. 
The proposed cataract fees for the year 2020 are as follows. Cataract surgery or CPT code 66984 will be paid at $557.58, which is a decrease from $654.47, which is what it currently pays in 2019. Okay, so big picture, cataract surgery. There are over 4 million cataract procedures done annually in the United States. And this volume will grow as the population grows. Cataract surgery is a super successful procedure. Every human develops cataracts unavoidably as a normal part of the aging process. Ophthalmologists perform cataract surgery. There are about 20,000 ophthalmologists in the United States. Of that 20,000, about 8,000 of them perform cataract surgery. So 8,000 ophthalmologists performing just over 4 million cataract procedures per year. So to perform cataract surgery on a patient who has Medicare and a secondary insurance, which most people do, that ophthalmologist is paid by CMS a total of about $650 in 2019 to perform that cataract surgery. Now, maybe that's more than you think, maybe that's less than you think, but what is cataract surgery worth? What is the value of cataract surgery? Value is what somebody is willing to pay for a product or service. That's what CMS values cataract surgery at $650 in the year 2019. But value is also what someone is willing to accept as payment for a product or service. So is it worth it for an ophthalmologist in 2019 to perform cataract surgery for $650? I would argue the answer to that question is yes. So of the 8,000 cataract surgeons in the United States, I would venture to say that over 95% of them perform cataract surgery on patients with Medicare and they accept that payment. So CMS values cataract surgery at $650 in 2019 and I would argue that an overwhelming majority of ophthalmologists are willing to accept $650 as payment for cataract surgery. Is it worth more or less than $650? Well, if we look back over time at what cataract surgery was paid at. So if we look at this figure, figure 32, physician reimbursement for CPT code 66984 by year. CPT code 6694 is cataract surgery. This is what CMS pays doctors for cataract surgery or allows doctors to be paid if a patient has Medicare and a secondary insurance. And you can see that over the past 26 years, since 1993, the payment has not gone up. It stayed flat essentially for the past 20 years. So if you look at the year 2001 and the year 2018, it's a straight line, no change. Can you name another service by profession that, is, that involves a highly educated individual using expensive technology, modern technology that has to be updated, that is paid the same or even less over a 26 year span. I can't think of one. What is the annual inflation rate over time? The annual inflation rate over time is about 2%. So if we were paid $650 for, if ophthalmologists were paid $650 by Medicare to 
1998 for cataract surgery, just to keep up with a 2% inflation rate, the cost of that cataract surgery or the payment for that cataract surgery, keeping up with inflation, should be $985 in the year 2018. It's not 985, it's 650. So compensation to ophthalmologists for a high-tech, highly sophisticated procedure has stayed flat for the past 20 plus years while inflation has caused the price of goods and services everywhere else in the economy to increase. So what's another government organization where the government compensates for a service over time? I can think of one, the postage stamp. So what does a postage stamp cost over time? In 1995, it was 32 cents. Well, if we apply CMS's logic in the year 2019, that same service should be 32 cents. But it's not. It's 55 cents per stamp to send a standard letter. In the year 2019, it's 55 cents. It was 32 cents in 1995. It's now 55 cents. Cataract surgery was $650 in 1998, and it's about the same in the year 2019. So one of the absurdities of the medical payment system is that there's very little free market policy. Medical doctors in the entire medical profession's payment scale is at the whim of the federal government. All physicians, not, not just ophthalmologists, every single physician. And all students applying for medical school or already in medical school should understand that a career in medicine is significantly affected by CMS policy. Most physicians in private practice are small business entities. We employ, we, our practice employs about 50 employees in our ophthalmology practice. And if any medical practice experiences a decrease in reimbursement, then what are the consequences? So for example, cataract surgery, paying on average $650 in 2019 is scheduled to decrease 15% to $557.58 in the year 2020. Well, the medical practice can cut expenses by freezing salary for the staff, for the employees, and that's gonna to lead to unhappy employees that take care of the patients. Number two, we could reduce the salary of our staff which again leads to unhappy employees that care for the patients. Number three, we could lay off our employees, but we need employees to see patients. The physicians can just work 15% harder to make the same amount of money. That's very difficult to do. And in order to work 15% harder, we would need to hire more staff and have more square footage, more equipment, more computers, our expenses would go up just to be 15% more productive. The physicians can lay down and take a 15% pay cut and insulate the staff from the impact of that pay cut on the staff. That's not gonna make any physician happy and it's not gonna incentivize the physician to take better care of patients when the physician is compensated less. The price of every modern service or product increases over the course of time, except medical services. Now, how have ophthalmologists survived in this 20 plus year span despite the same payment? Four reasons. Number one, efficiency. We work quicker and we use technology to provide better outcomes with less time allotted per patient and per surgery. Our skill set, our technology that we use has simply gotten better. And so we're able to be more efficient and make it work. Number two, we've, ophthalmologists have acquired new skills and new treatments and new techniques. So we have evolved our techniques 
to more efficiently deliver cataract surgery and great outcomes for the overwhelming majority of our patients. So they see well and the outcomes are great. Yeah, number three, prior to 2005, charging an insured patient for the extra costs associated with presbyopia correcting advanced technology lenses. Prior to May 2005, charging an insured patient for the extra costs associated with these IOLs would have constituted balance billing because, you, because you'd have been charging extra. This is an this is a article in 2006 uh, by a very well-respected consulting firm called Corcoran Consulting. The title is Billing for Presbyopic IOLs. So it reads, prior to May 2005, charging an insured patient for the extra costs associated for these IOLs would have constituted balanced billing because you'd have been charging extra for a covered service. Balanced billing could breach your contract with the payer, possibly terminating the agreement and resulting in monetary penalties. Some state insurance laws or consumer protection laws might also be implicated. The new CMS ruling in 2005 removed the balance billing obstacle by establishing that surgeon or facility charges for additional items and services intended to correct presbyopia are not covered. Collecting for non-covered services, non-covered services from the patient doesn't constitute balance billing. As a result, Medicare beneficiaries may upgrade from a conventional lens implant to a, presbyo to a presbyopia correcting lens implant as long as they're willing to pay all charges beyond those associated with standard cataract surgery. And under the new Medicare policy, ancillary services that the physician may bill include refraction, contact lens fitting, wavefront testing, corneal topography, corneal pachymetry, or refractive surgery such as LASIK. So on May 3rd, 2005, CMS ruled that presbyopia correcting lenses allowed surgeons to charge the patient extra for implantation of presbyopia correcting lenses, and it was not considered balanced billing. Is charging Medicare patients for extra services and supplies associated only with presbyopia correcting lenses considered balanced billing? No. Billing patients for non-covered services and supplies has always been permitted by Medicare and is not considered balanced billing. Billing a patient for the disallowed amount of a covered service when the provider accepts assignment of benefits is balanced billing. The presbyopia correcting IOL Medicare ruling clearly distinguishes between covered and non-covered items and services associated with these IOLs. So basically in 2005, CMS allowed patient shared billing where ophthalmologists could implant more advanced technology lenses that corrected presbyopia and eventually astigmatism. And they allowed the doctor to charge extra to the patient for placement of these advanced technology implants. That was huge. So the, by opening up that door, Cataract surgeons who were getting paid the same for decades could then offer a more advanced service with overall better outcomes, but importantly, ophthalmologists were allowed legally to charge extra for that. That increase in charge allowed ophthalmologists to essentially stay in business and continue to operate their private practices and compensate their staff. The fourth method by which ophthalmologists survive, despite the stagnation in compensation for cataract surgery, is that there are procedures that ophthalmologists are allowed to charge the patient for because CMS does not consider these services or procedures to be covered services such as LASIK surgery, a refraction where we test and measure the eye, the patient's eye to determine their glasses or contact lens prescription, corneal topography where we map the cornea surface, or elective services such as LASIK or lens replacement surgery where we place a presbyopia correcting lens or an astigmatism correcting lens. These elective type of services have allowed 
ophthalmologists who perform cataract surgery to stay in business over this 20 year span. Now in the year 2020, that will change because all cataract surgeons will be required to take a 15% decrease in payment for the same service. And what do I think will be the result of this decrease in reimbursement by CMS? Our, the practice can cut expenses, as described earlier. Ophthalmologists who are late in their career might simply just choose to retire. That would not be great because there are a finite number of ophthalmologists in the country. If you decrease the number of surgeons, yet the number of patients needing cataract surgery increases, that's not a healthy balance or a sustainable balance. Early career ophthalmologists who are laden with educational debt will enter the practice of ophthalmology and be paid much less for cataract surgery the pay cut will make a young ophthalmologist professional growth more challenging. And another result would be that ophthalmologists will simply focus more on procedures not covered by CMS. Or they may increase the fees charged for procedures not covered by CMS to offset the decreased reimbursement by CMS for covered services like cataract surgery. So what's my policy solution. I'm not a politician and I don't want to be one. But in my opinion, the most logical long-term solution would be to open up balance billing for all physicians. So let's look up the definition of balance billing. So Wikipedia says balance billing, sometimes also called extra billing, is the practice of a healthcare provider billing a patient for the difference between what the patient's health insurance chooses to reimburse and what the provider chooses to charge. Advocates of balanced billing argue that it increases incomes of high quality healthcare providers and serves as a measure of their dissatisfaction with insurance company fees. Critics say that balanced billing lets providers raise charges through stealth rather than transparent pricing creates unnecessary administrative costs and patient confusion, and allows insurers to simply pass along costs to patients rather than helping them to secure good value. It is thought to erode political consensus in favor of a one-tier system of health care and to inhibit some people from getting the care they need by making that care more expensive. In the United States, balance billing has received growing attention in the 21st century with many states passing a variety of laws to limit them and a federal law receiving serious attention in 2019. The problem appears particularly in the case of emergency rooms or hospital settings where a single provider may be out of network and provide services outside of the control of the patient. Health insurance in the United States is typically managed, provided by a managed care plan with a preferred or exclusive network of providers. Balance billing does not occur with providers in network as the insurer negotiates an agreed rate ahead of the service. So in the United States, balance billing is, for the most part, not allowed. But I think it should be the solution for the decline of payment to physicians and physician practices for delivering care. So for example, I've been doing cataract surgery since 1995, 24 years. There are ophthalmologists that are newly minted. They've just come into the workforce. They've been in practice let's say less than five years. And when it comes to learning a craft, a surgical craft, you can get good after, let's say, a year of doing cataract surgery regularly. Let's say after you've done 200 procedures, you can get good. But all surgical procedures are nuanced. And a conscientious, experienced, meticulous surgeon that has done not 200, but 20,000 procedures 
is going to be able to deliver much better outcomes than a newly minted surgeon in any field. So why should a super experienced ophthalmologist like myself be paid the same as a completely inexperienced ophthalmologist? That is the current system we have. We're all, all ophthalmologists are paid by the same code, 6694. So CMS value 66984, cataract surgery at the same amount. So perhaps a newer ophthalmologist would accept the CMS fee and the more experienced ophthalmologist would be able to balance bill the patient for the same procedure. Because of the perceived and real benefits to the patient or the consumer, the patient could choose to have surgery from the less experienced CMS paid surgeon or choose the more experienced but more expensive CMS paid surgeon who bills extra through balance billing. So currently CMS pays the same flat fee. In fact, CMS could pay as little or much as they want. CMS would be a stipend, but would allow free market principles in the medicine. And I would advocate that a doctor would need to disclose up front exactly what CMS will pay toward their procedure, for example, cataract surgery, and the doctor would be required by law to disclose exactly what they would charge the patient above and beyond what CMS pays. So the balance billing would be transparent by law. I would be totally okay with that. Ultimately, patient access would not be harmed since patients would be able to find specialists who offered services for lower or if they chose higher costs. The government expenditures on healthcare would be controlled and more manageable because outlays to doctors could be reduced over time. CMS could reduce cataract surgery by 50%, 90%, but as long as cataract surgeons were allowed to balance bill, then the free market would take root in healthcare system. Patients would shop for value. Competition would enter healthcare and we all know over time with competition, you do get a better product. So to sum up, the cut in cataract surgery reimbursement will have winners and losers. The winner, the only winner I can think of in the year 2020 with this 15% cut is the federal government. The losers are the patients, the doctors, and all the staff that are in physician-run medical practices. So the solution for cataract surgeons, since balance billing is not legal, mm -hmm. but I would ask that our legislators consider making it legal. In my opinion, cataract surgeons will need to focus on non-CMS procedures to offset the decrease in payment for cataract surgery. So, Finally, my hope is first and foremost that the proposed cut is rescinded. Number two, if the proposed cut is finalized but balance billing is allowed with transparency to consumers and patients, then we could inject free market forces into medicine and I think that would be wonderful. And I don't claim to understand why the cut is coming down after 20 plus years of no increase in reimbursement to doctors. But if it goes down, literally, the consequences mentioned in this video will occur. Thanks for watching. Leave comments in the section below. Have a wonderful day.